Today I'm going to teach you how to cut a subject out of a background and put them in a new background. It's called compositing and it's really cool. So in compositing, basically there's a lot of elements involved, but the main part of it is combining multiple images together to create a believable, and that's, I say believable because it's not real easy to get it to look believable, but you try to get the most believable scenario possible uh, with lots of impact, not a lot of distraction in the background unless that's what you're going for. Maybe that, maybe the background is more of the focus, but in most cases, the subject is front and center, they're right in your face, and I like to do a lot of this kind of work when I'm doing compositing photography. So you take a picture uh, basically of a person on a, on a plain background, which we're going to work with, and then you go out and you shoot, whether it be an HDR photo of a, a landscape of some kind, or you can just take a single shot that you've taken if the quality is decent and you can work with it in camera raw and pull out the details with a single shot. Um, this example right here is one of those where the background was a shot I, I wasn't even intending on using. I actually was walking through this hotel, saw a room I wanted to use in the future, took one shot and walked on, used natural light, had it at like 400 ISO, didn't even think I was going to use this shot, it was a reference image. And then later on when Mac Fun approached me about using their software to show what it could do, I made a composite and I put this little girl named Abby in the front and I had taken her picture like a year ago against a gray backdrop uh, and then combined the two images together, got it to where it was pretty believable, you know, but it wasn't perfect. And then I pulled it into Intensify by Mac Fun and that's where I drew all of the mood and the believable shadows and highlights and things like that that really make this picture pop, you know, it's, 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 a plugin like uh, Intensify that can really take a composite to the next level because you have so much fine control over where the details are, where the colors are, uh, bringing out elements in the eyes that you just wouldn't have you know, even seen before. And you can do a lot of these techniques in Photoshop manually for sure. With compositing, there's way more ways to skin a cat than I can count on my fingers. So experiment, use third-party plugins use the stuff built right into Photoshop. In fact, I recommend getting good at the stuff that's built into Photoshop because when you do go to use these third-party plugins, you're gonna actually get better results because you're gonna understand how to combine your knowledge of Photoshop with something new that you bring in to up your game. Like, whenever I see a new plugin come out, I get all excited and I might only have one little thing in that plugin that I like, but it adds that much more to my toolkit, you know, and so, by having that option, you've expanded your creativity, you've expanded your toolkit, uh, and it's going to show a lot of diversity in your work, and people are going to notice that. Okay, we're going to go ahead and jump into this tutorial. And to start off with, I'm going to show you the elements that we're going to be working with. This is Abby right here. She was my model. I took this photo probably about a year ago, almost to the day. Um, and I'd been wanting to use it, just hadn't found the right situation. And then I was in the historic Wolf Hotel in Ellenwood, Kansas uh, a couple weeks ago. And I was actually doing a photo shoot for a client there. And like I said, I was walking by this room and I was like, wow, that's an awesome room. I, I need to remember this place for future jobs. So I just snapped a shot, single shot, and walked on and took pictures of a couple other rooms in there. And I was going to, you know, show these to clients and say, hey, would you like to have some vintage shots done in this particular room? But it ended up working out to where it ended up in a shot after all. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of noise and lens distortion as far as like warping the image and whatnot, which had to be adjusted in this image in order to get it to look a little more pleasing to the eye. But it was a single exposure. I actually used the blinding light coming through the window to my advantage. I even washed it out more because it really helped separate my subject from the background. So here's what we do to start with. We take this little tool right here. I'm going to click on it and you see it says quick selection tool. This is your best friend if you're a compositor. Photoshop made this pretty dang easy at least to get a jump on things. 
So you just drag that along like the body area here. And I use the brush about this size when I'm doing detail at that level. So we've already got all of that. Now I'm going to go in here with a smaller brush and I'll pull in some of this hair. And I'm not going to be super careful. I'm just going to go along and try to get the basics that I need, but I don't want to go out and get like the little tiny curls. I might go to the edge here just a little bit. Um, this is pretty much compositing 101. Like if you ever watch anything from Joel Grimes or Aaron Nace or Glenn Dewis, uh, all personal heroes of mine and where I learned to do this, this is a very similar approach to what they would do to get started on a composite. And as you can see up here, I actually probably pushed the brush too far and it cut some of this gray into my selection. And so to get rid of that, just hold down the option key and take out what you don't want. And then I'll just maybe put that little piece of that bow back in. Now right there where we're at, and I can stroke in a little more hair if I want, right there where we're at, if I was to mask that, this is what we would get. And it's not perfect, but it's not horrible. Like if you back out, you'd say, dang, pretty good cutout for that 30 seconds you spent. But if I zoom in closer, you can see where the hair looks very choppy. You're missing lots of strands. You know, there's just little things that don't look clean. We've got background showing through the hair, etc. So here's our cutout so far. I'm going to take the mask off that just by hitting undo because we're not done yet. We're going to go to refine edge and we're going to choose our background to be overlay. And this kind of lets you see what's back there so that you know what you want to refine. And you're already selected on this brush right here. This is basically I'm going to use this just to kind of get the hair detail. So I'm going to zoom in at 100%. And I'm going to do this real quick because I don't want this tutorial to last forever. But I'm just going to go zooming around this hair. And Photoshop's going to kind of bring in some of that detail again that I'm missing. Some of these lighter hairs will get lost because it was kind of a lighter background. But you can see that it's starting to retain more of the hair detail. It's not going to get it perfect. And if you want to throw out a really quick composite that's, you know, cell phone size, you can probably get away with leaving this. But if you plan on doing any client work and they're going to blow this up and put it on their wall, this is only the beginning right here. Now, you can get lucky sometimes in an area like this. Like if I take my brush here and I say, oh, I do not want this gray. Uh, you can kind of paint in there and sometimes you can see it analyzed it and said, oh, I guess he does want that. But if I go around the edge here, I might get lucky. See what that did? It brought back a little bit of it there, but there's some opacity there, and so it'll make less masking for me later on. A lot of times, this will go completely, you know, it'll black it completely out. Um, but if I was to make a mask out of this now, like if I go ahead and pull this out, and you can do it from within the, the refine tool here. I should have shown you that. You can choose if you want it to be a selection, a layer mask, new layer, etc. I often just leave it as selection, and then I just make my own mask down here. Um, so now if we zoom in here, the hair, it has more of the strands, more detail. And that's really all I'm going to show you on the cutout here, um, because we want to get it on a background like this, and then start seeing, you know, what needs to be repaired, what needs to be added. And often, just by dragging this person in here, we'll be able to start seeing where we have to work and where we don't. Because if you don't have to do something, save yourself the time. Um, I used to go into composites and I'd put like, say, I'd put a layer underneath here, and maybe put like a really bright green. I'm just going to show you this so that you know how to save time. I would do this and I'd go, oh, that hair, it just looks terrible. You know, I've got to fix all this. How am I going to do this? Well, I'll tell you what. I learned later on that a lot of times I'm going to have a lot of light coming through and hitting this hair. And so I'm not going to have to repair as much of it as I originally thought. So you can see by dropping her in here, it's already not too bad. And I haven't even straightened out this background or anything. So like on the background, I'm just going to make a duplicate of it. I'm going to show you real quick. Hit the Command T. Let me zoom out here. Command T for the free transform. And then if you hold down the Command button, you can kind of just, you know, straighten things up. There's many ways you can do this. You can do it in Camera Raw and use 
uh, lens correction and things like that. I use all kinds of different techniques. It really just depends on the mood I'm in. But, you know, just roughly, I'm just going to hit enter right there. And already the perspective looks a lot better. And, you know, we're getting kind of closer to what I have here, except that in this particular shot, she was bigger. So I could just take this, uh, zoom her up a little bit. I'm not sure how much bigger I had her. I can't remember. I think it was something kind of like that, maybe even a little bigger. So we'll just, for, for the sake of the tutorial, we'll stop there and look at it. So see, it's kind of, if I zoom it in at the same level that we have the other shot, just by eyeballing it, we got pretty close. I have her over that way a little bit more. But I also did some tricks to this where I manipulated the background and kind of spread things out this way and this way, uh, basically allowing me to have the window exactly where I wanted it, have my subject right in the center. So there's a lot of manipulation that still has to be done. As far as like hair, where you've got strands of hair where the background was kind of showing through. If you want to recover some of that hair real quickly, you can take a brush, make it kind of small. I usually do about 50% here, and then I use my pressure sensitivity because I'm using a Wacom tablet. Um, and I'll just hit like option and sample a close by hair color, like say right here. And I'll start with maybe about three or four on the pixel size. And you can just kind of draw these hairs back in. And by doing that, you're covering up that background on the, that you see. And if you want to take your time on this, you can really get this to look believable by taking, you know, other shades, some darker ones. And you just put lots of little hairs in there until it doesn't look like there's pieces missing. And we'll just real quickly... Now this is a really sloppy job, obviously, because we're in a hurry here, but you can see how that starts to repair the hair. But when you back this out, if I was to take this layer off, you can see a big difference there that it makes. And I would go through all the hair and do that. And areas where there's background right here, I would just go ahead, I would erase, like let me zoom in a little bit here. I would erase all of that, including that little hair probably, and I would just draw in my own little fuzzies around it, and then it makes, you know, it makes the illusion complete. It, it makes you really believe that the window is shining through underneath her hair, as you would see here. You see the little window sill coming through there. So I drew in some little extra strands and whatnot here to get that effect. And then, uh, because I have a depth of field, you know, really shallow here, like you see the lamp and everything's blurry, and her eyes are nice and sharp. You can even get away with going in and blurring some of this hair on the edge because if you was to take this photo in real life and she was really standing here, if you were using like a 1.8 aperture, you would see sharpness here. And as it went back, uh, you would see that the hair started getting softer and there'd be blur in areas that were further back than, say, what I focused on, which would have been the eye. A good example of that is go back earlier in this video and just look at me doing the talking part and you can see that my desk and uh, my computer and everything is slightly out of focus, but I'm sharper. And so apply that same kind of reasoning and logic to your composites when you're making them. So basically, there's our piece there. There was the Wolf Hotel we threw her in, and that's how you cut a subject out roughly. And that's as far as I'm going to go because this tutorial is getting way too long. Um, We'll dive into compositing further and further as we go, but this is for you beginners who have seen these images and you don't know how somebody creates them, and then maybe you go, oh, I could never make an image like that. Well, now you know that just in a few seconds you can get this far, and then you can go into a plug-in. Once you get it all polished and beautiful, you can go into a plug-in like Intensify, you know, or Tonality, or any other plug-in that you choose. Or you can be a, a purist and completely do it all using adjustment layers. Go in here and just get all your shadows and, and make everything beautiful. The sky's the limit. It's really just however you want to approach composite photography. Take what you learn from me, from anybody else that you watch on YouTube or a tutorial that you bought. Apply that knowledge, but don't try to be the person that you watched. That's what I 
if I had to give out any advice on compositing, there are so many composite photographers out there that I feel like their work all looks the same. And you're going to always be able to see traces of your influences in your work. But the more that you can invent your own techniques and find your own style, the better chance you've got of sticking out and landing a client who really resonates with your work as opposed to, you know, Joe or Bob over here to the right or Kathy and Sarah over here to the left. They're going to go, nope, this person right here in the middle, this is my style. This is what we're looking for. Thanks for watching The Art of Photography, and I look forward to talking to you on the next tutorial.